Okay, hello, this is Tonam here, and today we're going to be... Oh, there's no computer here. Uh, well, I haven't done a video on setting it up yet, but... You haven't seen this yet. Oh. Oh, yes. This is from 1998, and it has Microsoft Windows 98 Second Edition. So, uh, what we have to do is we need to, now there's actually no hard drive in this, the previous owner took it out because, well, obviously it has all the data on there. Now, I also have some floppy disks. We also have 128 megabytes of RAM. Yes, not kilobytes, I'm pretty sad if it was kilobytes. How many megahertz? Oh yes. It's 133 something. Those are the details. So yes, now uh, we're going to try and plug this in and see if it works. Now, it has some audio ins and outs. It has a, I don't know what this is, a joystick port, that one. Uh, we've got the power. It's 230 volts, okay, good. This one is an IO, I don't know what that is. That's a parallel. We've got a VGA. We've got a... Uh, IO ports, two USBs, and uh, uh, Ethernet. It's probably like a 10 megabyte port because back then you didn't have fast internet. So, yes, this is the Compaq Desk Pro EN, England, probably. So, yes, now it has two of these little levers on the side, and uh, yeah, now you might be wondering, it's not opening backwards. Instead, you have to put the front. Yes, this is that old. It has an Intel Core, Pent or an in Intel Pentium 3. That's what it has. So, yes. Let's set this back here. Now, these old computers seem to have this odd feature where you can do things like this. Oh, yes, like this. You can just open things up. Hmm. How do I open up this? Oh, ah, oh, a daughter card, it appears. Need to remember that this goes into the middle one. So you've got a daughter card right here, which has uh, all of this other stuff plugged in. So these are PCI ex PCIe Express, PCI Express ports, and uh, this thing's kind of coming out of its socket. Need to make sure it does not. I mean, it's still in contact, still contact, and then there's a sound card. Or a video card, audio video card, a sound port card. There's two sound cards in this. And, uh, yeah, there's also a little contact at the top here to detect if the case is on. So we might have to, like, take the thing on and off. Now, you might have noticed there's no hard drive in here because, well, of course, that there's not, there's not in here. We even have the power supply open up. So this is, like, a really organized system. As you can see right here, we have the processor down here, the Pentium 3, we have RAM, I wonder how much RAM this is, it's probably not that much, and I don't see any control card. So now, let's have a look, one of, the, one of these bits of RAM, which it is, haven't been taken out yet, ah, here we go. So, let's see, how much RAM is this? This is a 128 megabyte module. So yes, let's take out all of these and see what it adds up to. Because well, of course the computer won't be able to boot up. Because well, it doesn't have any operating system. Well, that's obvious why it does not. Here we go, it's jumped out. Let's see how much is this? 
This one's 64 megabytes. Ooh, looks like you have to upgrade one of these to the newer one. Or at least not newer, but like... These are all the same modules. You have to check if they're the same megahertz as well. And there we go. We've got our first update. Or upgrade. I mean... Yeah. This one's also different. Oh, so this is stock. This one here. So the others were like added in. And there's three slots. And there's one PCIe Express. But it doesn't say how many megabytes this is. Hmm. It's unknown how many megabytes this is. Oh well. So uh, yeah, now let's put the this stuff back in a stock. So this was in the middle socket. Okay, it's probably easier to just put these in. This is the Kingston, so this goes to the side. Over to here. Oh no. There we go, all the RAM is firmly in. So the next thing that we are going to be doing is extracting the processor. So the processor is a simple fan here. This is a clip, which we have to unclip right here. There we go. Well, that was relatively fast. This is the exact same mechanism as the uh, Pentium, uh, I don't know what, the Pentium Multimedia Extension one but the power supply slammed see it has some old leftover thermal paste but the processor won't be doing that much work and it's surprisingly not that dusty you can see some dust but not too much and overall the system isn't even that dusty so you might not have to clean it that much i still will so it might need a cloth and clean it out now okay so here is a normal cleaning thing so we're going to be unplugging this thing here because well obviously we don't need this yet let's unplug this hmm, why is this so hard to unplug Okay, I don't know why it is. Oh well, I guess we don't exact. It's not exactly that important to remove that. There's also a little pin thing here. Ah, oh, here it is. Here's the pin thing. Oh, look at this! It just undoes itself. Pretty nice. So it's that easy to just. These early generation computers are literally that easy to take things off of. You just need to clean around the outside. This is not even that dirty. Alright. Let's set this down here. Let's also clean the inside of this thing here. Get the floppy drive out as well. Okay. Ooh, this one has a lot of dust on it. We have to clean that stuff off. Oh, wow, look at this. That's how much I collected. This black stuff here. So this one has a lot of dust inside it. Okay, it doesn't have any dust inside, like, the actual thing. So there's the underside of the floppy drive. Some dust there, clean the top. Okay. Clean some of this stuff off here as well. Ok. 
okay. Oh no, don't do that. I think there's no uh, capacitors around there to be knocked down by the massive CD drive. It's surprisingly heavy, the CD drive. Oh, don't do that. All right, as soon as we put these back in, we don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And of course, we will just set this thing back in like that. Nice, satisfying clicking. I really like that. Then uh, let's set the CD drive back in. There it is, that goes back in too. And you flip up. Yep. You have to pull it up. It's like reloading a gun, it's like a like that. Instead it's like get the new mag. There we go. Gun reloaded. But you used binary to shoot. That's your bullets. And each time you reload the CD drive. Okay, um, let's plug this cable in. The ends look the same, but I think this end was the one that goes into here. And the other end goes into the daughter cards, which are here. So I will be taking these off, each of them, and cleaning them. So I'm going to get a screwdriver now. Okay, what card is this? It's the it's a Creative Labs sound card. And then we got a model number as well. So this is what the card looks like. So it's just a general sound card. So we'll be just doing some careful cleaning on these little ports over here. Alright. It's not really that dusty. That's really it. <laughs> Dust. Alright. So this is done. Set that set that to there. I'm going to take off this one here as well. What else? Is there something else? This doesn't want to come out. Wow. That's really odd. Oh, there we go. Never mind. It comes out. It was just a bit tight. Yeah, it's really refusing to... There we go, alright. So this is... Whatever this is. So, let's get the cloth. Yeah. Not even that dusty. Okay. Now the daughter card itself. This here. 
Oh, okay, so that was dust on there. But it was not. See this weird white thing on it. I think it's normal for that to have it there. Let's clean it around a bit. Okay. So let's put in the first card, which is this. So it goes in like this here. Oh, I understand why it, well, it would not go in. And that is because it's, it's just a bit too long to fit in. A tiny bit of bending doesn't hurt the machine. There we go, all right, it's gone in. Okay, so theoretically right now this car should be in here harder than ever before because before it was kind of loose but now it's in properly so yeah it should make better contact now. Okay, let's put this card in. It should go in here with ease. Okay. There. Get the screw. Screw it in here. Okay, so this daughter card is cleaned. I need to clean this corner over here because that's where the daughter card is going to go and of course I'll be doing multiple episodes of this where I get this computer out like this but of course I will be turning it on in this episode is this dust over here? yes that is Alright, most of it is blown away. That's good. Let's put this daughter card back in. Alright, moving on to the the uh, power supply. Ooh, 
there was a lot of dust under the fan right here. Oh no, don't do that. It's not the first time that that happens. Okay. There's a massive spot of dust right here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's there. It's like a massive line. Definitely gonna be cleaning this up. Okay, it's gone nice. So on the side of the thing, okay, there's a little bit of dust down in here. Okay, everything is done. Oh, here is a reason why you cannot use this power supply for the uh, Pentium MX computer. Is because this one is not the right amount of pins. Now this isn't tight. Okay, I'll just won't touch it because well you can't even put it out. But that's that's a fourteen pin connector. So yeah, that just mimics and how old this is. And okay, so the power thing went down on here like this. I'll just do it like this. Yeah, I drove it up behind the fan. It's probably a bit more neat. Okay, connect up the CD drive right here. Connect this to this daughter card over here, which means I have to take the daughter card out again. Good thing it's so easy to access these things. Now you remember that we have to plug it into the other thing. Okay. Alright. This thing can come down here. Now let's take the processor out itself. So I pulled up this little lever right here. Pulled it up. Ah, oh, here it is. Okay. So yeah, now introducing the Pentium three. <coughs> introducing the Pentium three. <laughs> yes, and I'm pretty sure this was Pentium's fastest processor at the time. So yes, I would assume how much this computer would have cost back then. Okay. The chip thingy. Alright, there's a little stand that we can unclip to take the motherboard out, but we don't need to do that. That's really all there is around the processor. We can put the uh, fan back on. There we go. Clip right on there. Okay. Plug the CPU fan back in. There. Alright. Everything has been cleaned. Apart from the underside of this thing here. So 
things in the way. Yeah, the thing didn't close down. Drag this thing around the edge of the fan. What I will do is that I will drive it around this place here, and then I'll just have as little of it as possible hanging off there. But the main issue is this power cable right here, hanging down, hanging into the thing. Why wouldn't it close down? What's in the way? It's definitely not that. The CPU fan like this? No. Maybe the IDE cable comes above or over the these cables here. Still not the issue. Oh, the processor thing, of course. I forgot about the processor clip. Alright, the most important rule all the time when you have a processor is make sure you always press the processor lever down because otherwise, I mean it will still work the computer probably might not work actually because the pins are in contact Okay Clicked in. Now we should be able to close it with ease. Nope. What is it? Okay. Get this out and this out. Okay, you didn't have an excuse that time. When about this fan, it's a bit... Yeah, the air will just go around those. Okay. Let's put the case on. Plug it in. And turn it off. And see what happens. Also... Let's hook it up to the screen. These things don't want to go on. There we go. Alright. The first thing we need is a power cable. VGA to VGA. So I'll just quickly set this up. Like that. So this computer is from an error. But they used to have the screen just above like this. They used to have it on the top. And um, the VGA to VGA cable goes like this behind. Connect that side up. Let's also do this thing here. I think the cable just about long enough for the whole thing to connect up just about okay well that should be going fine now the cable it is on the right setting okay let's go there let's actually have this thing down here like this let's close that and put it over there Okay, we can see the screen well. Yes. Alright. Let's get an adapter. Ah, found it. Here it is. Do that. Alright. 
All right, let's see. Ah, no ID fixed thing present. Let's insert one of these floppies. This is disc one. We should probably put the other one in. So yeah, these are floppy discs, everyone. Oh, it's really shit. rare that it's old known that these ever existed. can put a CD in here. There's an interesting sound. Okay, we need a keyboard, first thing. Keyboard is now working. Saving configurations. All right. Invalid system disk. Replace the disk and press any key. Well, I mean, of course, it doesn't have a hard drive in it. So, of course... This won't do anything. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a bit long, but, of course, this old computer works. The Pentium 3. Uh, and whenever I get a hard disk, I will, of course, be uh, doing a video about that. So it's still working, apart from there's no hard drive in it. So yeah, that's going to be it. Bye.